Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. Today's a really special video as we're comparing all three versions of the Brooks Levitate 6. We have the original, the Stealth Fit, and the GTS Edition, which stands for Go To Support, making it the stability version of the Brooks Levitate 6. Now, with all that being said, unlike the Glycerin, there is no GTS or stability version with the Stealth Fit upper. The Stealth Fit only comes with the neutral setup. So we got a lot to talk about here, and I'll, we'll also bring in the Ghost 15 compared to the Levitate 6, because they're kind of comparable and there's some overlap. So yeah, let's run with it. Now, before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, they didn't have a chance to preview this video, and the final synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say, please leave a like on the video, and consider subscribing, as it really helps me make these videos. Here we go. The Levitate 6 is very much a classic, traditional daily trainer, and fits into Brooks's Energize experience. And according to Brooks, they have four different experiences across all of their models. They have the Cushioned experience, the Speed experience, the Energize experience, which the Levitate falls into, and then the Trail experience. And then to kind of go further down the rabbit hole, they also have different experience levels. So within the Energize experience, they have Neutral Springy, More Springy, and then Most Springy. And the Most Springy category within the Energize experience is what the Levitate falls into. And I realize that's confusing, so I'll put Brooks's graphic on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. But all that boils down to is it's kind of like your traditional daily trainer that has a little bit of pop to the midsole that gives you a little bit more life while you run. So it can kind of take at some of those faster runs. So it'll be a slightly faster daily trainer compared to Brooks's conventional models like the Ghost. We'll get into all those details later, but yeah, it's their energized bouncy midsole here. Each of these shoes costs $150, so no matter what model you select, it's the same price. They also did increase the midsole this year to more millimeters, so you get 32 millimeters in the heel, 24 in the four foot four, and eight millimeter drop. Now I will note this is a less aggressive drop compared to the Brooks Ghost, which has a 12 millimeter heel to toe drop. So this shoe's gonna be a little bit more balanced or a little bit flatter as far as um, the offset goes. Now with regard to the weight, the shoe did come down slightly. The midsole lost about 10% in weight. The original edition weighs 10.5 ounces. The Stealth Fit comes in at 9.9. .9, and then the GTS is 10.9 ounces. And if we compare this to the Brooks Ghost, which is kind of the counterpart as far as like neutral daily trainers go, uh, the Ghost comes in at 10.1 and has 36 millimeters in the heel and 24 in the forefoot for again that higher 12 millimeter drop. So, so just something to note, um, the Ghost probably pairs directly against the Levitate original since they're both neutral shoes. And the big Biggest difference being the midsole, but we'll get into all of that later. Next, we'll compare the uppers, and something important to note is that the GTS edition and the standard edition of the Levitate 6 have the same exact upper. The only thing that differs is the midsole. So with that being said, we'll set aside the GTS shoe and just compare the Stealth Fit to the original Levitate 6. Now, the uppers are completely different. The midsoles are exactly the same, so there's not much of a massive change with regard to the ride, but the uppers do have a, quite a bit of a different feel here. Now, Brooks does this with a lot of their models. Models. They have their classic upper and then the Stealth Fit. The Stealth Fit is basically a knit-like material, gives you a sock-like feel, has a little bit of an elastic nature to it, and is fairly snug. Now, going back to the classic, this is a Creole mesh, which is te technically an engineered knit, but it feels very much like your traditional mesh upper here. Breathability is pretty good, fairly average, and is comfortable. It's just kind of what you expect from Brooks. Now, as far as the sizing goes, it's true to size, although very narrow, and I don't believe the Levitate comes in wide. So if you need a little bit more room to the upper or have a, a wider foot, this might not be the shoe for you. I did find it to be quite snug through the midfoot and forefoot, even on the original or classic upper. And the same thing goes with the Stealth Foot. I would actually consider this to be even slightly more snug. It's not a massive difference, but it is slightly tighter fitting just because you have that elastic knit-like material. And I was actually surprised with regard to the breathability. Typically, knit uppers aren't that breathable, and the breathability here wasn't that far off compared to your typical mesh that we saw on the classic upper. So the breathability, even though it's a knit shoe, was quite good. And we're in the middle of the winter, so actually, you know, kind of makes your foot a little bit colder, but um, I was actually quite happy to see that. So when we get into the, actually some of those warmer months, I think it will have a nice breathable upper here for a knit shoe. The other big thing that really separates these two uppers is the tongue and heel counter. Now, if we start with the classic edition, the tongue feels very much like a Brooks tongue, maybe slightly thinner compared to something like the Ghost, but very much same geometry, same shape, same kind of setup here. Thought it worked well. My only caveat, and I say this about all Brooks shoes, said it about the Glycerin, said it about the Ghost, 
I wish the tongue was gusseted. It just seemed to move around a little bit and the edges were a little bit uncomfortable because it's a very narrow shoe and I would have to kind of flatten them out and get them all situated. And once I did, it was fine, but it was kind of an unnecessary step. And if Brooks would just gusset their tongue, I wouldn't have that issue. So that's kind of one of my personal gripes. I know some people don't like that, but I wish they would just gusset the tongue. It makes my life easier. Now, if we go over to the Stealth Fit Edition, it's a whole different story. The tongue on the Stealth Fit is integrated directly into the upper. It is a different material, so it is going to be slightly more elastic, but nonetheless, it's all one piece of upper and has a very seamless, consistent feel. So seamless, in fact, that they did the lacing system on the outside. They have these two cables that run down both sides of the lacing system, which keep the laces from going through the upper, giving you a much more seamless feel, and I found it to be quite pleasant. Now, I was worried because this elastic tongue is so thin that I was gonna have to worry about lace pressure if I need this and cinch the laces down a bit more and that wasn't the case mainly because the upper was so snug and had a great experience with how well it hugs my foot again if you're someone who has a wider foot or needs a little bit more volume this might not be the shoe for you but for me I found it to be quite nice and the fit and lockdown here was quite good. Now, the other thing I mentioned was the heel counter. This is different as well. It has a little bit less padding compared to its counterpart, although it's not a massive change, just slightly less padded. And it includes this knit-like collar piece, which is kind of pointless. It doesn't really like grip your ankle. It just helps keep some debris from getting in there. I think it's more aesthetic than anything else. And again, they do this on all their knit shoes. It might just be part of the construction. Didn't bother me. Didn't feel like it hurt me. Maybe it just kept some of the debris out. Either way, it's there and something to notice. You do get a pull tab back here, which is quite nice. And the heel counter is slightly more flexible compared to its other counterpart here. But nonetheless, it is a very snug fit. And I thought the lockdown was superb. And uh, Going back to the classic too, I thought the lockdown was great here as well. I really didn't have an issue. And I think that kind of goes back into the fact that these are rather narrow shoes or it was very snug in my experience. And now that we compared the uppers on these shoes, I'm gonna bring in the GTS edition. And like I mentioned before in the review, there is no GTS edition for the Stealth Fit, unlike the Glycerin, which does have a Stealth Fit GTS shoe. There's four different versions of the Glycerin and only three of the Levitate 6. So just keep that in mind. So we'll set the Stealth Fit off to the side and then we'll compare these two shoes, which look exactly the same because they kind of sort of are. The only difference is the midsole. So let's compare them. Now Brooks does stability in an interesting way. Basically they take their neutral version, like the Levitate 6 here, there's no stability mechanisms and they keep it relatively the same with one tiny exception. Basically they add something called guide rails, which are walls of foam on the lateral and medial side, which keep you going the correct direction. So you happen to supinate or pronate, you hit that foam wall and you get guided back into your correct pattern in theory. Now I will say the medial guide rail is much more substantial and much more supportive compared to the lateral guide rail, which I found here in the Levitate 6 to not provide all that much more guidance compared to the neutral edition. So if you're someone who supinates the rolls to the outside, I don't think the lateral guide rail here was all that supportive. The medial side was adequate, so if you pronate, I think it is quite supportive and does the job, but I did find the lateral, the lateral support or supination support to be quite lacking. And one other thing I do want to say is that the GTS edition is a little bit less expressive or a little bit a little bit less lively towards the back half because those guide rails do kind of constrain the experience ever so slightly. It's not a massive difference but it is noticeable if you run with uh, each version on each foot which I did do. Um, so it is noticeable but not a massive difference there and I just wanted to kind of bring that up because those guide rails do impact how the midsole performs ever so slightly while you're using this particular model. So with all that being said, let's talk about the midsole. It's DNA Amp V2. It's 10% lighter than prior versions, which makes sense because the shoe did come down in weight. And according to Brooks, it's their bounciest and springiest foam yet. Now this does look quite unique and unlike any other midsole out there, mainly because it's a polyurethane foam wrapped in a TPU casing, which is why it's so shiny and so unique looking. For a classic traditional daily trainer, I was quite happy with the Levitate 6, although I will say that DNA Amp midsole does make the shoe slightly bottom heavy and the shoe overall is a slightly heavier daily trainer. But with that being said, compared to most other Brooks shoes, I think it has a nice level of energy turn and cushioning for the amount of midsole that you get. I would say this is probably your mid cushion daily trainer. So it doesn't really hold up some of the max cushion daily trainers, but this makes the shoe a little bit more nimble. And that's where I'll bring in the Brooks Ghost 15. The Levitate 6 and the Ghost 15 are both neutral daily trainers, which I think makes for a good comparison. The Ghost 15 provides a softer, more well cushioned experience. Although I will say the midsole is 
bulkier, does have a little bit more width to it, and the upper is a little bit more accommodating. You do get a tad bit more of padding and ankle killies and tongue area as well. Just a softer ride, doesn't have as much energy return to it, and the midsole is quite flexible. Now, kind of going over to the Levitate, it is going to be a stiffer midsole, allows you to experience that rocker geometry much more. The midsole, while not as soft as the Ghost, has much more energy return to it, and the upper is a rather narrow experience. I'll also say the DNA Amp Foam lasts much longer compared to the DNA Loft Foam we see on the Ghost. So as far as the longevity goes, I think that goes to the Levitate. Levitate's gonna be a little bit faster, a little bit more nimble, as the midsole isn't as bulky. Now, I think both shoes work well. I think the Ghost is probably more oriented towards slower runs. You can probably take it on a long run as well, while the Levitate is gonna be for a faster daily trainer. I think both work well for a wide variety of runs. You can kind of do whatever you want in it. It just comes down to your personal running style. And another big thing I forgot to mention is, or I mentioned earlier on the review, is the Ghost has a 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter drop, while the Levitate has an eight millimeter drop. So that's another big factor to determine what running shoe is good for you. But the long and short of it is, the Ghost is gonna be a little bit bulkier. It just has a focus on softness and cushioning while the Levitate, a little bit more streamlined. Notice that rocker geometry more um, a little bit long, a little bit more of a longer lasting midsole, and that midsole does have a little bit more energy and pop to it. Moving on to the outsole, pretty much the same thing as last year, ton of rubber coverage, which is good news for those of you that will use this as your workhorse daily trainer. They did leave in these arrow patterns, which according to Brooks, help with transitions and make them faster. I don't know about all that. I think it's supposed to make the shoe a little bit more flexible. I don't think that really does. The midsole is quite stiff, and I don't think the outsole has a whole lot of a role to play here. Sometimes it does in other shoes with softer midsoles, but when you have this DNA amp foam, which is rather rigid, um, the outsole pattern I don't think matters a whole lot. But with all that being said, it didn't have any major issues. The grip was fine, and I think having this much rubber works well if you're using this for a ton of miles or just want to get a ton of miles out of the shoe. So let me know down in the comments, what do you think of each of these additions, and which one would you pick and why? I would love to hear from you. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.